Welcome back to the course in nuclear medicine physics. Today we're going to examine collimators, which are an essential part of modern gamma cameras. When a radiopharmaceutical is injected inside a patient, it emits photons. The purpose of the collimator on the camera is to ensure when the photons are picked up as they enter the patient, they enter the camera in a perpendicular direction. This ensures that we get a proper image of the patient so that we can then reconstruct what the radiopharmaceutical distribution inside them looks like. But now let's talk about collimation because that's a, that's a major important part of the angular logic. So let's talk about um, some, some specifics of uh, collimation. Um, between the uh, patient and the crystal, this, these collimators um, are placed, um, commonly made from lead. Um, and the idea is if you do not have collimation, you don't know where the signal that you have just received is coming from, unless you have you know, more sophisticated cameras like the so-called Compton cameras, et cetera. But those are not, you know, th those have not been, th those are very complicated cameras that have not really necessarily been very successful in the past. This is the mechanism that is used nowadays very commonly um, in imaging using collimation as such. Um, again, if you don't know where the event, what is the directionality of the event, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to sort of visualize the event. So you put in collimators. And so the idea of a collimator is that it only allows events that are almost at 90 degrees to come in and it prevents the rest of them. The downside, of course, being that you're killing a lot of signal. Um, now you will see in PET imaging and the beauty of PET is that you do not to do, have to do physical collimation because of the dual gamma ray nature of things. You could actually do um, some kind of a, uh, uh, um, some kind of a, um, electronic collimation, but we'll talk about that later, okay? So this is the, the idea of a collimation here. Uh, let's, let's get into some specifics. Uh, first of all, you know, these are typically made from lead foils or from lead, uh, from cast lead, and I'll show you some images of that. And the walls here are called septa. So the whole collection is called a collimator and these are the septa, okay? Now, if photons manage to penetrate through the septa, we call that septal penetration. That is not supposed to be happening commonly. It's supposed to be, the design is supposed to be as such so that you know, more than 95% of the times you are stopping things from septal penetration. Um, so you can hear examples where you got a cast lead, but here's a lead foil where you've got a foil and another foil and you just shape the foil, another foil and you attach them to each other. You sort of see here's one foil Here's a foil at the bottom coming to it. Um, yeah. So um, there's different kinds of collimators. And uh, today we're going to really focus on parallel hole collimators, which is what we have here in a short lecture subsequent to this that I will get, give in two days. We're going to talk about converging collimators, uh, diverging collimators, and so-called pinhole collimators. But the most common uh, mode of collimation um, used in nuclear medicine imaging is, is parallel holes at the, at the moment. Uh, and how th thin or thick or how tall you make the collimator depends on the application. And we're gonna talk about that because changing, for example, the, the size of the hole or the thickness of the septa or the length of the holes, these things have implications on the sensitivity of the system and also on its spatial resolution, as you can imagine. So what, what is most commonly used is a general purpose, um, we call that low energy general purpose or low energy all purpose, LEGP or LEAP, okay? Um, and so this is for 140 kV, but if you've got higher energies, then you're gonna be using higher energy types of collimators. And so, so you can sort of imagine qualitatively that to improve 
the resolution. Improve the resolution uh, actually means making it smaller. So technically, I, I should really be saying here to improve the resolution, which means to make the resolution better, smaller, meaning the full width at half maximum smaller. Uh, to do that, you actually need smaller diameter holes. You need to make these holes smaller and smaller to make the resolution better and better, meaning ma ma making the full width at half maximum smaller. Uh, so that's one example. But if you do that, then that means uh, you need more, you, you're going to have more lead because you're going to have thicker septa, um, or just more on average, more 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 septa, and that's going to decrease your sensitivity because you're killing more events. So you can sort of imagine just just by looking at this, and we're going to look at the numbers in a, in a second or the equations. You can sort of see that resolution and sensitivity are competing with each other. If you improve the resolution, okay, if you improve the resolution, you're going to degrade the sensitivity. Uh, and vice versa. Um, and also to increase sensitivity, for example, you could make the holes maybe wider or even shorter. You'll see in a second why making it shorter makes the sensitivity better. But if you do that, then the spatial resolution suffers. Okay, so, so um, there's a bit of a competition going on. And as, as you're trying to hire, uh, uh, image higher energy isotopes, for example, in these examples, like lutetium-177 is one that is really becoming very popular uh, for theranostic applications, which we talked about before. Uh, well, you're going to have col neat collimators that have thicker septa. Okay, this S has to be uh, uh, larger, but that's going to, of course, impact the sensitivity. But you got to make this septa thicker, otherwise you're going to have uh, septal penetration uh, or too much septal penetration. Okay, so the, again, I'm just re-emphasizing and reiterating what I've been saying. So the columnar's role is to define the direction of accepted uh, photons, uh, and they should really be allowing photons that are, let's say, perpendicular to the detector surface. In reality, it does have a narrow you know, acceptance angle or, or somewhat of a narrow acceptance angle, and that results in columnar blaring. Uh, and also, it is possible for some photons to to pass through the septa. But again, the design should be such that more than 95% of events sort of trying to pass through the septa are not successful. Um, so here, here is, uh, here is uh, uh, we're gonna talk about four, four kinds of events here. So that is just an event that has been properly collimated. That was an event that was bound to be successful. And you can sort of see that if it's, you're not exactly at 90 degrees, even at, uh, angles that are somewhat different, you still can pass through here. And you can sort of now see why the length of the septa, how tall it is, will change the acceptance angle and therefore the sensitivity. But some other events will be absorbed in the septa. Um, however, it is possible to even have scattering. So this thing comes here and gets scattered and is detected. That's an undesirable event, but it will happen. So that results in blaring. And also, you could literally pass through the septa in, in a small subset of events. Now, when you design a collimator, you've got to have a number of things. Essentially, the, the, the right collimator is contextual. As uh, Claire, one of our brilliant uh, nuclear medicine residents would say, it's contextual. So, so, uh, so yeah, so it depends on the application. All right. So here we have, um, so, so what we have here is the three main design parameters to consider in a parallel hole collimator. So let's focus on these three parameters. The hole diameter, the septal thickness, and the septal length, okay? Which is how tall, uh, what is, is, this, is, is the collimator, and what is its length? So what's the role of these three things in the resolution and sensitivity? Now, before we get there, there is really two things. And in our chapter two, we talk about this. There's really two kinds of resolution we talk about. One is the intrinsic resolution of the crystal. We're not talking about that now. And that turns out to degrade with the, the thicker you make the crystal, even though it becomes more sensitive, but the scintillation photons can sort of even disperse more because it's thicker. So that's going to degrade the, the uh, intrinsic resolution. 
And also the higher the energy of the gamma ray, again, it takes a larger distance to really stop it. There could be more associated scatter and things like that within the crystal for higher energy. So the higher the energy of the gamma ray and the higher the thickness of the crystal, you're actually going to get a poorer uh, uh, resolution. But we're not talking about R1. We're talking about R2, which is the collimator resolution. What is the associated resolution with the collimator? But these things add up in quadrature. So, so independent sources of uh, resolution degradation sort of add in squares. So if you have other things that are, for example, adding to the resolution degradation, uh, it's going to add in quadrature. Um, now, again, to really visualize, this is a very key thing for you guys to really see and visualize. If your source moves away from your collimator, the resolution gets worse. And that's because even, you get even a wider acceptance angle. So you see here, this photon and that photon, or this gamma ray and that gamma ray are not being accepted. They're being stopped. But here, those same two directions are being accepted just because the source is away. So actually, getting close to the collimator is important. That's why, you know, in designs of, you know, how you image the patient, it's very good for the collimator to move very close to the body, surface uh, of the body uh, because that's going to improve the resolution. So um, that's the point of the fact that this distance F um, kind of proportionally increases. So the larger F is, the larger is going to be the resolution, which is bad. But then the diameter of the hole also decides this, and also the length. You can, again, sort of imagine that as you make this length taller and bigger, you're going to be rejecting more of those angles so you're going to get better resolution. Even, you're, even though you're killing more signal, you're lowering the sensitivity, but you're actually improving the resolution. So the larger L is, you're going to get smaller uh, collimator resolution, which is good. So again, looking at those same things, D uh, is a hole diameter, S is the collimator um, or the septal thickness, and then we've got L and this is F. So this is actually the technically, this is the equation. Now, this is a bit of an... Uh, this picture is problematic because F is way too small. I mean, typically, remember, the distance that, uh, of a source to the collimator is quite larger than L. So because F tends to be quite larger than L, you can sort of ignore this L and this little C here. So you can sort of assume that the uh, resolution is a function of these things. Okay, and so this is the formula. D, F, L, and I, I explained that. So again, common resolution gets better, smaller is better, when you decrease the whole diameter, when you increase the collimator length, and when you decrease the distance of the source to the collimator. And again, note that the septal thickness has to be designed such that it stops most of photons from penetration. Now let's talk about sensitivity. There's a complicated formula that's in our uh, book that you can sort of see here, but let's work through this complicated formula. But there's a whole bunch of things that contribute to the sensitivity. One is again, the, the same D, the same L. We are talking about this D, which is the overall crystal diameter, because the larger the crystal diameter, the larger your sensitivity, because at a given time, you're collecting more events, okay? You got the intrinsic efficiency, um, and then you've got the septal thickness. Look at this equation for a while, and you'll see some interesting things. Uh, first of all, you sort of see that here we've got d to the 4, whereas here it's more like d to the 2. So it's really kind of like sensitivity is proportional to d to the power of 2 and inversely proportional to l to the power of 2. So d is at the top, l is at the bottom, okay? Um, and the larger this number, the, be the better, right? You want more sensitivity. So by increasing the whole diameter, you can imagine that obviously sensitivity should improve. Uh, by decreasing this length, sensitivity will improve because less events are being sort of rejected. And decreasing the septal thickness makes a difference because if you make this smaller, you're going to have more events that are going to, you're going to have less events that are being killed and rejected. And also uh, increasing the diameter of D. Um, so, so look at these equations, work through them, but you will see that collimator design is a compromise between good resolution and good sensitivity. But also notice that for parallel hole design, the distance F 
to the source does not change the sensitivity. Whether I'm here or here or here, technically that's not significantly changing the sensitivity. Uh, you know, let's, let's move forward and let me try to clarify this a little bit more. So you've got the sensitivity. Um, you guys should try to sort of prove this. I think you can sort of see it, um, but essentially sensitivity is kind of proportional to the resolution squared. But remember, high, the higher this value, the better, but the resolution, the smaller, the better. So you can sort of see that, for example, if you improve resolution by a factor of two, that means that actually your sensitivity is being degraded by a factor of four, okay? Uh, and resolution depends on the source distance. Sensitivity in the big picture does not depend on the source distance, okay? And these are some numbers that we're providing, but again, notice the collimator design changes these numbers. But roughly speaking, these are the kind of resolutions and sensitivities we're sort of seeing. Uh, for every 10,000 photons, you only get one. So that's somewhat of a low sensitivity, but we just have to, because with collimators, uh, that's what happens. Now there's some really smart designs of collimators. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and we're gonna talk about that, especially in SPECT imaging, really smart designs that try to improve the sensitivity. Uh, yeah, so here are examples of, um, here are examples of just, you know, don't quote these numbers as, you know, the only thing that these companies produce are these. Now, this is just examples of collimators that we've seen in the past. So we've got low energy general purpose. You've got low energy, high resolution. Uh, so you can see when you, for example, move from same energy, but a bit of a higher resolution, you can see that the whole diameter becomes a bit smaller here, right? You see that change. But let's focus on the ones with medium energy um, high energy, ultra high energy. Okay, so to do that, when the energies increase, you really have to increase the septal thickness. That's why you see these numbers increasing a lot. Like you're going from 0.2 millimeters to all the way up to like two or three millimeters, just because you need thicker septa to prevent inter septal penetration. Um, okay, so now you've done that, but that kills a lot of the signal. So to deal with that, for example, and for design considerations, you also then make the whole diameters bigger. You can sort of see that whole diameters are getting bigger too to at least uh, you know, uh, have a higher sensitivity that's happening there. But now by making the whole diameters really big, you're, you're kind of making your resolution perhaps too small. So now maybe you wanna increase the septal length to at least make the resolution a little bit better. So you play with these parameters, but the key thing is you gotta increase the septal thickness, and then how you deal with the resulting loss of counts, you play with these, uh, you know, perhaps you, you do this to gain some sensitivity, but then you do this to gain some resolution. So you sort of see these kind of things that people have to play with, but at the end of the day, when you have a high energy, higher energy uh, collimator, at the end of the day, your sensitivity has dropped because you've made the septa thicker. Uh, and your resolution has also dropped um, because you're making the holes also a little bit bigger to counter the, the, the significant loss of uh, sensitivity here. So you do that, so that results in a loss of resolution too. So you kind of play with these parameters to, to sort of make it work. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so, so, and you see how the collimators become heavier and heavier. You're using a lot more lead in these collimators. Okay, so things to know about collimators. They are usually made from lead. Holes are typically hexagonal. The lead strips between holes are called septa. Parahole collimators project the same object size under the camera and, and the field of view does not change with distance. Camera, meaning whether you're here or here or here, you, you can image the subject. Camera resolution degrades with distance. Higher energy nucleus require a high energy collimator. And a high energy collimator needs thicker septa, right? So here's a question I want you to work it out on your own. It's a pretty cool question for you to work out. Um, you may or may not see a question like this on your midterm. So I'll just stop there and say no more. 
but try to go, work your way through this. It's a question about having a parahole collimator with a certain sort of sensitivity, use a certain sample of uh, rhenium-188, and you know how many counts are you going to get in 10 minutes? So, so work your way through it. I've given you the answer. So hopefully you can find this answer. Uh, so here's a poll, a question. Um, so we've got a collimator A versus B. A has twice worse spatial resolution. Which one is more sensitive and approximately by how much? Answers are coming in. Think about it. Okay, so, so we've got a good number of you answering. Let me get a hold of my, of my uh, mouse here. Okay, so let's, yeah, so the answers are not consistent. Um, the correct answer is B. Uh, and why is that? Well, remember that trade-off between resolution and sensitivity? Well, if A is worse, its sensitivity is better. Now, worse means actually bigger. So remember that formula that sensitivity is proportional to resolution to the power of two? Well, so if A has worse spatial resolution, that means the value of uh, R, spatial resolution is, is twice larger, worse is larger for resolution. So two to the power of two is four. So that means the sensitivity is gonna be four. So actually A will have larger sensitivity by a factor of four. I hope that makes sense, right? So uh, A will actually be more sensitive. So that's the trade-off between resolution and sensitivity. Okay, so here's a true or false question. Deterrence to improved spatial resolution in the clinic for the gamma camera are limited injected activity and scan durations. So the question is, are limited injected activity and scan durations obstacles or hindrances to improved spatial resolution in the clinic for the gamma camera? Is that a true statement or a false statement? You have to work your way through it. Um, the fact that we cannot inject a patient too much or we cannot scan a patient for too long, does that impact the spatial resolution that we have in the clinic for the gamma camera? Okay. So most people, well, yeah, almost half of you have answered. And, and most said false. And I suspected most would say false, but it's actually true. So let's see why. Because at first you would be thinking, well, what does this even have to do anything with special resolution? These things kind of determine the counts, the noise levels. Noise shouldn't really impact the spatial resolution, um, but it does. And the, the reason is as follows. It directly, it does not, but in the clinic, in a practical sense, it does. 
The fact that we cannot acquire a scan for too long because of patient comfort and economics of imaging and all that stuff, or the fact that we cannot inject too much radioactivity into a patient because of safety considerations means that in a typical scan, we're getting a certain number of counts, not a huge number of counts, right? And because you have a certain number of counts, you have to design your collimator so that it has very good, decent sensitivity. Otherwise, if you are collecting forever or for so much radioactivity coming in, you don't care about sensitivity too much. You would just design a collimator that was super high spatial resolution, and you wouldn't care much about the sensitivity aspect of the collimator. You would just design, for example, a collimator that, was, that had very na narrow holes, very tall, uh, septa, you wouldn't care about uh, sensitivity. You were like, ah, oh, I get so many counts, I don't care about it. But you have to worry about those things. And because you worry about that, you have to design a collimator that has decent sensitivity. And because you're designing a collimator with decent sensitivity, that means you cannot have superb spatial resolution, right? So if you didn't care about those, or imagine like you've got an ex vivo sample that you could scan for like 12 hours straight with radioactivity coming from it, well, you just, would use a, a, a super, super high uh, resolution collimator. You wouldn't care about sensitivity because you get so many counts. So I hope that explains why in, you know, in clinical practice, the resolution of a gamma camera is not like one millimeter, okay? It, it, you, 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 don't, you cannot do that because you're gonna be killing a lot of counts and you're gonna get very, very noisy images. So that trade-off is always entering the decision-making. I hope that's, that's a clear one. So we're, we're done. Uh, these are just some questions for you guys to work your way through it, them um, and try them, take a look at these. I hope that you can uh, look at these and, and work them out. Um, and that's it.